Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we are starting our uh, final session for the day and for the workshop. And in this final session, we will discuss um, Nemo TMS toolbox that we recently developed, which is a toolbox for uh, combining neural level modeling with a large scale uh, brain stimulation modeling. Um, Please send your question to Q&A uh, panel at the bottom of the screen uh, throughout the workshop. After this demo, we will have first Q&A uh, regarding uh, the questions that will, will hopefully come by that time. Uh, then we will have a presentation uh, about um, non-standard uh, head modeling. So, had models that you cannot generate automatically from animals, from uh, patients. And finally, we'll finish with bigger Q&A session. Um, once again, you can send any question um, regarding the topics we discussed so far or in general about the modeling, uh, specific questions about um, your studies. And so we'll try to resolve them. With that, I give word to Dr. Zina Shinpur, who will continue about NEMO TMS toolbox. Hello, everyone. And uh, today I'm going to discuss uh, NEMO TMS, which is our newly developed uh, multi scale modeling toolbox. And before doing the demo, I'm quickly going to go over uh, like the general idea behind multi scale modeling. So as an introduction, you have already learned about why uh, electric field modeling is important and how to do it. But one drawback with electric field modeling is that you cannot uh, model direct physiological responses of the brain to the electric fields. And that is an important aspect that we want to research on. And also because in vivo measurements are kind of tricky to do, multi-scale modeling can help us in this regard. So this is the general idea behind multi-scale modeling. Basically we have uh, like, let's say our macro scale modeling electric fields at the level of the brain, large scale. Then we couple those electric fields at the level of the neurons, the microscopic level and simulate the action potentials and the neuronal activities at the level of the neuron. And then we can even take that to the next step to subcellular step and in NEMO we are focusing on calcium concentration in the neuron induced by voltage gated calcium channels. And so our uh, NEMO TMS toolbox, uh, because multi-scale modeling requires uh, different technical expertise in different uh, domains, uh, we have put together this NEMO TMS to kind of uh, like make it easier to do this kind of multi-scale modeling. And this is in order to model single neurons in response to single pulse or repetitive TMS. And uh, you can, we have like freely shared the code on GitHub and I'm gonna show you how to use it. And we also have a paper under review currently for that, but the preprint is available on BioArchive. And just a brief overview of how the NEMO TMS pipeline works. Uh, this is basically, let's say we have some neuronal reconstruction based on optical imaging. We can automatically uh, convert that to compartmental modeling. Basically, you can model all of the branches in the neuron in 3D in uh, like smaller cylinders and they're like equivalent electrical circuitry and we can put all the ion channels and stuff in our model and generate our 3D neuron model. Uh, currently, we have three types of neuron available in uh, NEMO TMS. The first one is CA1 hippocampal pyramidal cells. 
and you can generate uh, these kind of models from any reconstructions that you want. This is based on the Jarsky model. And we also have two uh, new cortical pyramidal cells from humans, layer two, three, and layer five. Uh, these only work based on a specific neuron reconstruction. These are from Albera model. Uh, but let's say uh, we generate our neuron model and then we want to couple our uh, neuron modeling to the electric field modeling that we have done in SimNips. It doesn't matter what kind of model you're dealing with. It could be human, animal, in vitro, or any other model you want. Basically, in the coupling uh, step, we place the neuron anywhere in the brain we want, or like in an in vitro model, and couple the electric fields to the neuron model by calculating calculating the quasi potentials, which are basically like external membrane voltages. You can kind of think of it like that. And that gives us the spatial distribution of the electric field, but also it is important to take into account the temporal distribution, like temporal component of the electric field. And that is basically the TMS waveform. It could be single pulse or TMS, different uh, like shape of pulses, like monophasic or biphasic and etc. By having the temporal and spatial component of the electric field, we can simulate how neuron responds to the electric field. And after that, we can uh, run the calcium simulation based on the membrane voltages to ca calculate calcium concentrations. And finally, we can visualize in 3D how the neuron uh, like responds to the electric fields and how the calcium is induced in the neuron. And also we have the capability if you don't want to use like a uh, realistic complicated uh, electric field modeling, you can also use a simplified version which uses uniform electric field. Also you have the ability to add synaptic input. It's optional if you want. And this is a collaborative project with a few other teams and uh, with, and let's just directly go over uh, how to run MIMO TMS. And this is just an overview. I'm gonna go back and forth for the explanations. So if you go to the github.com slash opitz lab, uh, this is our GitHub. We have shared a bunch of stuff in our GitHub. If you go to Nemo TMS, this is the freely available toolbox that I just described. There are some information here. And there are some tutorials that uh, if you need more details, you can go over. We have described everything in more detail, like uh, in detail. Before uh, showing you how to run Nemo TMS, I, uh, I will explain you need uh, a few dependencies that you have to install before using Nemo TMS. One of them is MATLAB. I'm sure you're familiar with MATLAB and you use it for your research. The other thing is Neuron Software Package, which is a very famous software package for simulating neuron models. And also, if you want to do the realistic electric field modeling, you, you need to install SimNibs. And you saw the tutorial yesterday on how to simulate electric fields in SimNibs. And finally, for the electric field modeling, you need a numerical solution like software package called UG4. But because it's a bit tricky to compile these files, we have already provided the static builds. Uh, that you can just download for your OS version, Linux, Mac, or Windows, and just extract it, and you're good to go. You don't have to install it. And let's say you have already installed those uh, dependencies. The way you use Nemo TMS is basically like this. So if you click on code, you can just download Nemo TMS package anywhere you want. I have already downloaded uh, like here, it's a zip file. You can uh, extract it. After that, you see a few files like the tutorial or quick guides. And you also have one folder including all the codes necessary to generate the models and any subsequent steps. 
And basically the way you generate models by running uh, either of these three models. This is for the hippocampal model. This is for the layer two, three model in humans and layer five in humans. But before uh, running this, in order to make sure a neuron software package works, uh, you need to compile uh, some mod files. These are basically like if you go to Jarsky files, libmake, there are some mod files that uh, are codes responsible for uh, like modeling, uh, like ion channels and other mechanisms. This is really a neuron thing, not a NEMO thing, but you have to compile this uh, beforehand to make sure NEMO works. And the way you compile these mod files, you only need to do it once per computer. You don't have to do it uh, for every model that you want to generate, only once per computer is fine. And the way you do it, if, if after you install Neuron, if you click on Windows and then type MKNRNDLL, this is a software that comes with Neuron responsible for uh, like compiling these mod files. And you can choose your directory. Uh, like right now I have already uh, had it in the history, but you can just browse if you want. And if you go to the, this directory and click on make, uh, something happens in the background and it says that the uh, compilation was successful. And you can see uh, some, some files are created here and this is a DLL file that is uh, that neuron uses in order to use these mod files. And th these are the mod files for the CA1 cell. You also need to do the same thing for the uh, human model. And after this, again, you have your DLL file here. You are ready to finally do your uh, model generation. Uh, let's say with, let, uh, with the hippocampal model to begin with. So if you just open this file in MATLAB uh, and also make sure in all of the steps that you do in MATLAB, you change the, your uh, current folder into the folder that includes those uh, scripts that you want to run. It's a MATLAB thing if you're not uh, like familiar with. And the way uh, this works is basically there is this morphos folder that includes uh, all the morphologies that you want to generate your files. Nemo Toolbox comes with like 10 different hippocampal cells already available as examples. But if you have any other morphology files that you want to create your models from, you just have to place your model in this folder. And then uh, what you do is just run this function in MATLAB. And this model receives one argument. And that is basically the name of the file uh, inside your amorphous directory. For example, let's say I want to like uh, make a model based on this reconstruction. I just write the name here and click enter and a neuron starts uh, like MATLAB starts working and it asks you a few questions. For example, uh, if you want to remove the axon or if your reconstruction doesn't have an axon, you can create an artificial axon, but the models that we have provided here have detailed morphologies. So I'm going to go with myelinated axon because it is the most realistic version of a model. And then you have to choose a name for your model. It can be anything you want. Uh, and if you keep it blank, which I will do here, it will just keep the name of the reconstruction as the model name. And finally, you have to specify where you want to put your synapse. Right now, we only provide functionality for adding one single synapse on the neuron, but you can specify uh, the distance from the soma. It is placed on the apical dendrite and you can uh, choose the distance. And if you don't care about the synaptic input, you can just keep the default. It doesn't matter. By default, synaptic input uh, doesn't work until you activate it.
but you have to place it on the neuron. And then some stuff happened here and the neuron is uh, like, uh, is being generated in the background. And um, this is basically a geometry of the file, the input file. As you can see, it's a very detailed morphology and you can see it in 3D if I rotate it. Uh, we have dendrites and axon and everything. And finally, the model is generated. And that's basically the very first step that we did here to go from uh, like the constructions to a 3D neuron model. And let me show this to you after you generate your model outside of this model generation in the root folder of Nemo TMS. A folder is created called models that includes all the models that you create. Right now, I only created one model and this is the cell four model that I just explained. And all the codes for the model and everything for the subsequent steps that you need to run the multi-scale modeling is pro like is put inside this folder and uh, you don't have to worry about these files these are some dependencies for neuron code but you do care about uh, everything that is inside the code folder so basically for uh, like any of the steps that you want to run after this model generation there is a folder that includes the corresponding codes for running that particular uh, step. For example, calcium includes all the codes for calcium simulation, e-field coupling is for this step and etc. And also after you run any of these steps, like a folder is generated called results that includes all the data that you generate for that particular step I'm going to explain later. And one more thing, uh, like today I want to explain how to run an, a layer five cell and the way you run a layer five cell is exactly like the jar scheme model, but you don't have to provide any input arguments because it only works with a specific uh, uh, reconstruction that is already available in uh, the Morphos folder. You don't have to do anything. If you run this, it will generate a layer five model. But because layer five model is pretty large, it's gonna take a few minutes to run. And for the sake of time, I have already generated the model beforehand. I can show it to you. And I think now it's a good time to uh, say this, that after you generate the model that I explained, uh, everything inside that model is pretty like self-sufficient like you can copy it anywhere else you want or even copy it to a different computer if you want and it should work because it has all the codes necessary to run the next step uh, the only thing is that if you copy to a different computer make sure you uh, recompile the mod files because as i said uh, these mod files are system specific but because I'm, com I'm copying from a different folder to the same computer, I don't have to compile them. So not, now that I have my neuron model, let's say a layer five neuron model, I want to couple that with the electric field model that I have run beforehand. And like yesterday, you, you learned how to run CNIPS modeling. Uh, but uh, for example, here I have taken the Ernie head model, which is an example file from Simnip you can download. And I have put a TMS coil on top of the motor cortex. And you see like this is the motor cortex and uh, the electric field is mainly focused around this motor cortex area. Let's say I want to put a neuron inside the motor cortex and simulate what happens to the neuron. Uh, basically, what I need is the, the mesh file that comes from same nips that I just showed you. I opened in Gmesh, but this is the output of the same nips. And this is uh, the electric field model that I will use. And uh, uh, also, yeah, before doing the coupling, I also need to export the 3D model in a format that my coupling step can work with. 
so basically I have my electric field modeling and I want to export my uh, 3D geometry of all the compartments of the neuron to do the coupling. And the way I do export those 3D geometry is pretty simple. I go to the like that particular model folder that I want to uh, do the simulation. I will go to the neuron because it's a neuron compartment code. I just have to run save locations and it uh, like exports everything that is necessary for this step. Uh, let me just open this folder in because I'm going to go back and forth between the code folder and results for folder. Right now I exported something from my neuron code and some data is generated inside results neuron folder and these are the like 3D locations of the neuron. You don't have to worry about the details inside, but just know that this is necessary in order to run the coupling. It, it will be automatically used. Now that I have uh, exported the 3D geometry and also I have my electric field modeling from Simnips, I can run the coupling step. And if you go to code, uh, e-field coupling, there are all the codes necessary for coupling. You only care about couple GUI and couple script. A couple script is to do the coupling in a script, but I will only show the GUI version today for the sake of time, because it walks you through uh, each step, uh, like in a graphical interface. Again, because it's a MATLAB script, I changed my directory to this uh, current script. And if you run this particular script, uh, it walks you through the things that you have to do. First, you have to select the output of the same nibs uh, that I just showed you. I want to simulate uh, this one that I have already done. I just open this mesh file here. It reads it in MATLAB. And uh, it shows you the result here and asks you where you want to put your neuron. And by the way, like this is a uh, this is a three D uh, like uh, plot. You can turn and zoom and everything, and also you can use data tips. For example, if you want to know where you want to put the neuron, any place you want, you can click and look at the X Y Z. Uh, basically, I want to put my neuron inside the hand knob region of the motor cortex. It's around this region uh, because I want to replicate one of the examples from the paper. I already know what location I want to put in and it's basically very close to the region that I selected. But you have to enter the XYZ of the desired location that you want to place the neuron in. So you put the XYZ of your neuron. And then also the depth of the neuron. Uh, you have to provide like how deep the soma of your neuron want to be placed in. Because layer five is pretty large, uh, I have to put it a bit uh, deeper than default to make sure that it stays within the gray matter. And I'm gonna show it later how you can visualize the neurons relative to the gray matter. Uh, and so step by step, it's going to ask you a couple of other things. Uh, right after you, uh, since we have exported the 3D geometry of our neuron, uh, it shows that to you because one important aspect of uh, like coupling with neuron is the orientation of the neuron because neurons behave differently uh, based on the electric field orientation. And uh, it basically asks you to specify the orientation of the neuron as currently is and the orientation that you want the neuron to be at. Um, most of the times the reconstructions, like it's kind of a non-written standard that uh, typically they are reconstructed along the y-axis. But if your neuron is along any other axis, you have to specify here, uh, you have to specify the somatodendritic axis, which is basically the vector from the soma along the apical dendrite. And right now it's along the y axis, and I will just uh, keep it as it is like 0, 1, 0. Uh, shows vector along y-axis and then you have to uh, input the desired 
uh, orientation of the neuron. Let's say uh, right now my neuron is at Y axis and I want it to be along the X axis. You have to provide the X, Y, Z, like for example, one, zero and zero. If you have a particular orientation in mind, but if you keep this blank, uh, neuro, like a NEMO automatically detects uh, the orientation of the neuron and places it uh, perpendicular to the gray matter surface because that's the uh, default orientation of the pyramidal cells relative to the gray matter. And I'm going to go with the default because most of the pyramidal cells are in that direction. And some stuff happened in the background. And then finally, it asks you for uh, one more thing. Just wait a second. Uh, another important factor is scaling electric field. Uh, the thing is, I have run my simulation beforehand, uh, like at a default. Uh, stimulator output, which is like one amp per microsecond. If you have worked with TMS, you know that's very weak. Nothing happens if you use that intensity for your simulation. And instead of having to run your simulation over and over again for different intensities, because intensity of the uh, TMS output and the electric field scale linearly with each other, instead of rerunning every time with different intensities, you can just use the default value or any other value you want and scale the electric field in this step. So if you keep it as one, uh, the default electric field, which will be used, which is very weak around like one volt per meter and nothing will happen at one volt per meter. Uh, but if you want to scale the electric field, you can specify any other value. Like I have uh, like played around with this model and I know that at, let's say, 120 volt per meter, the neuron fires, for example, and I can scale it to 120. And finally, the coupling is successful. And uh, now we have done the spatial component of the electric field and before running the simulation we also have to generate the TMS waveform which is the temporal component of the electric field and the way you do that uh, oh by the way before doing that let me show you the coupling results actually so if you go to results for that particular model a new folder is generated for coupling and you can visualize the new run uh, this is the quasi potential, which is basically the external potentials induced at the neuron level by the uh, electric fields. Let me visualize it a bit better. If I do widen the lines, you can see there is a gradient like uh, from one end, there is uh, like less, uh, like kind of like hyperpolarization at one end at the external membrane voltage and on the other end there is uh, depolarization. But this is just the external uh, voltages and not the actual uh, neuron simulation. And if I overlay the brain on top of it, and this is be, uh, also uh, like a trimmed version of the brain because neurons are very small relative to the brain it's hard to visualize neurons placed inside the brain so i have uh, like automatically trimmed the uh, brain around the location of the neuron and this is basically you can think of it as a zoom in version of this area and the neuron is placed like right underneath the gray matter and i can show it to you by making it transparent. As you can see, I have placed the neuron in like the lip of the gyrus in the motor cortex, perpendicular to the gray matter. And you can double check your results here. And uh, now let's generate the TMS waveform. In order to do that, you go to code TMS waveform. There is one MATLAB function for generating a TMS waveform. Again, change your MATLAB directory, run this 
function first it asks you what kind of tms pulse you want to use monophasic or biphasic like biphasic is more common so i'm going to go with that and then it asks you the step type for generating these uh, like tms waveforms and subsequently running the uh, neuron models uh, basically if you use five microsecond the time steps is like the a time resolution is higher and the results are slightly more accurate but the computational cost is higher so for most of the cases i recommend using 25 because it's accurate enough and it's faster and then finally you have to specify uh, like how many pulses you want and the interpulse interval in case of rtms for example if you keep it as 1000 uh, there is one second difference between each pulse. So that's basically equivalent to one hertz RTMS, but you can change that frequency if you want. And also specify the number of pulses that you want. Right now, I'm just going to go with the single pulse by having one pulse uh, because it's faster for the sake of time. And now if I go to the results folder, I see that uh, a TMS waveform, that there are some files generated for the TMS waveform. And I'm finally ready to run the neuron model. And the way I run this, uh, I go to code neuron that has all the neuron codes. Before actually running the simulation, I have to set up a few parameters like synaptic inputs and etc. And the way I do it is by running GUI params which is a GUI for receiving parameters. First, it asks you if you want to use uniform electric field or realistic electric field, because I have already done the coupling, uh, I can go with a realistic electric field. But if you want to use uniform electric field in the next page, it will ask you to specify the orientation of the electric field and its intensity. And then a uniform uh, electric field is used all over the neuron and you wouldn't have to worry about the same lips and coupling anymore. Any more. So right now I'm going to go with realistic electric field modeling, and then you have to specify some synaptic inputs. So we have provided the ability to add two types of synaptic input, random and synchronous. Random is just some stochastic input based on a Poisson distribution. You can specify the average number of uh, like synaptic inputs per second. Noise specify how random or how periodic the random input is. And weight is basically how strong the synaptic input is. Like the higher value means uh, the stronger synaptic input. And for the synchronous synaptic input, the concept is that a uh, synaptic input is delivered, uh, like synchronized to the TMS pulse. So in this case, there like it means that there is a synaptic input delivered two milliseconds before the TMS pulse. And by default, like you also have to specify the weight for the synchronous in synaptic input. By default, the weights are set to zero, meaning that we don't have synaptic input. And if you use a non-zero weight, that means you activate the synaptic input if you're interested in. Right now, uh, I'm just going to skip the synaptic input, but you can play around if you're interested. And after setting up these parameters, you can r actually run the simulation for this realistic neuron in response to the electric field with the spatial and temporal uh, pattern that you specified. And in order to do that, you run TMS script. And uh, the window shows up, uh, like in one window, you can see the TMS waveform. As you see, it's a biphasic pulse that has uh, like a few like peaks, like positive and negative peaks. And this is the somatic uh, voltage. And as you see, around time 15 millisecond, uh, a depolarization happens. And then because it is strong enough, an action potential happens. Now, if I go back in my coupling step, and if I use a different, like a uh, like weaker electric field amplitude, 
the new I, I would see that the neuron doesn't fire but uh, because we don't have time I'm not gonna go and redo it again but you can play around with amplitude and see what happens and uh, I just uh, like uh, you have to let the simulation to finish and write to file but because it takes a few minutes uh, I just stopped it because I have already run the simulation beforehand and I can show it to you and I'm gonna show it later how you can uh, visualize the detailed uh, membrane potential at the neuron but before that let's go over how to do calcium simulation after running this uh, membrane uh, like uh, neuron simulations. So if I go back to the folder that I have my finished uh, simulations, uh, if I go to code, there is one folder called calcium and I have to run this particular uh, GUI in MATLAB and again I will change my folder and the way you can run this is either by typing the name of this thing in, uh, in this function in MATLAB or just easier would be right clicking and click on run. A GUI will open up and the idea behind this GUI is that uh, like as I explained uh, in order to run calcium simulation we need to uh, use UG4 software but UG4 software doesn't have a graphical interface and it only receives a certain script with all the parameters and input files uh, and runs it like in a terminal. But because uh, it would be hard for, like we have developed uh, this GUI to simplify that process. And the way uh, you basically work is just, uh, you have to specify the folder that you downloaded UG4, the static build, and uh, you can do that by like uh, I have previously downloaded it and put it in this folder let's say you go to ug4 bin and ug shell that's the executable file for ug4 and uh, you have to specify it only once and then it is saved for future use and uh, then you have to specify the time step for running the calcium simulation. Again, a, f a shorter time step means that uh, the results are more accurate, but the computational cost goes up. Uh, so if you want, you can keep it to default. And also you want the length of the simulation. If you want to use the whole simulation data that you did in the neuron, you can just click the checkbox and you will use the whole 30 millisecond of the neuron simulation that I ran. But uh, before running the calcium simulation, it's important to know that UG shell uses a specific file format to read the membrane voltages and which is incompatible with neuron. And before doing that, you have to convert neuron files into a compatible format. If you click here, it takes a few minutes and it converts the file and it then a dialog shows that it's been successful. I have already done that. Uh, then if you click, click on generate script, it creates that script that I told you about that you have to, uh, like that is fed into UG shell to uh, run in the terminal. And advanced users can change a couple of other parameters here, but uh, you don't have to worry about it uh, if you don't want to deal with the advanced parameters. Uh, after generating the script, you can save the script into a file uh, and then if you click on run script, it will run uh, this UG shell with this particular script inside the terminal and return the results in MATLAB. Because it takes some time uh, to run the simulations, I will not uh, demonstrate it, but uh, it is pretty obvious when you run some stuff are shown in the MATLAB and you can see that simulation is going on. And I have already again simulated the results uh, for the uh, this particular model and I can uh, finally show how to visualize the cal like the neuron simulations and calcium simulations in 3D. In order to do that, you go to code visualization and you have to run this in MATLAB. Again, make sure you change your MATLAB directory. 
right click run a MATLAB GUI should open up and Uh, zoom is can you I guess you can yeah and if you open uh, click on file open voltage data or calcium data you can open the results that you have finished it takes a few seconds to load the data are pretty big right now I only have a very short simulation but it's gonna it can take some time if you have longer simulation this is the 3d morphology of the neuron with a voltage a membrane voltage uh, overlaid on top of it and this is the somatic uh, activity uh, that kind of helps you as a, as a benchmark. Now I know that, for example, shortly after like 15 milliseconds, let's, uh, let's say around 16 millisecond, an action potential is happening. And uh, I can just enter the desired time and give it a few seconds and it should, it loads here. And as you see, uh, like, uh, some action potential has been initiated in the axon and is propagating through the neuron. I can go step by step if I want to. Uh, like the wait, it's going to take a few seconds to go between each step. And you can also specify the sample size. Like, for example, go to five samples ahead. And you can visualize uh, the propagation of the action potentials in the neuron. And also uh, one more thing, this, oh, sorry. This is a, like zoom is like, uh, doesn't let me, do something like it's covering up my screen right now. But basically this is a 3D plot and uh, you can even rotate this file if you want, like in this plot if you want or zoom in and everything. And finally, if uh, I wanna visualize the calcium simulations, I can click on file open calcium. Again, it's gonna take a few seconds to open up the calcium results but it is the same concept. Uh, the calcium uh, concentration takes a little bit more time than after the action potential to be induced. So I'm gonna go like a bit later, let's say at 17 millisecond. And uh, as you see, uh, like there are some stuff happening around the soma and like uh, the dendrites very close to the soma. And if you remember the first talk yesterday by Dr. Flachos, uh, he uh, talked about this thing that he uh, like experimentally saw the same results. And, but because most of the calcium concentrations are uh, very close to the soma, uh, if you want to better visualize this, uh, these things, you can uh, work with like uh, change the maximum and minimum, which saturates the data basically. So if I use a smaller maximum value, uh, the results, I can see the results better, like the spread of the calcium uh, in the neuron. And that was basically a short overview of how to run the multi-scale modeling from electric field to the neuron level and the uh, subcellular calcium level. And uh, if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Thank you, Zina. Um, we have one question. Uh, so, Using this modeling, have you been able to reproduce a canonical uh, TMS evoked EG potential? So for evoked potentials, you need to simulate a population of the neuron. And right now we are at the very beginning of uh, doing this multi-scale modeling. And uh, right now, NEMO is only 
able to simulate single cell neurons, which will not give you an ERP, but still it is valuable because it uh, tells you how single neurons respond to the electric field. And also these calcium results can help you understand better how plasticity works in neuron. Okay, and do you have plan to extend? Yes, uh, so this is a pr very big project and hopefully we can extend. Uh, there are a lot of interesting things we can add uh, depending on the resources and time uh, available. Uh, like we, we can extend like a lot of different things, including the uh, population of neurons. Mm -hmm. And what about plasticity rules? Can you integrate plasticity rules in the stimulations? Uh, right now, what we have is uh, th there are some plasticity rules uh, like uh, included in the neuron model by calcium channels uh, in the neuron simulation. But right now, the calcium uh, simulations that we have does not take into account all the uh, sources of calcium. And it only simulates the voltage-gated calcium channels based on the membrane potentials that you simulate in neuron. And if you remember from Dr. Flahos's uh, talk, it seems that the most important plasticity rule for TMS, it seems to be the, this kind of calcium uh, reserve that we have simulated. But maybe for other type of NIBs, uh, we can extend to other types of plasticity, like include other types of calcium reserves.